much power I got, but it was witness. And these here are showing us, and over and over again, you know, the value of the Holy Spirit. Now, this was evidence that they were speaking, or that they, they, had, they were filled with the Holy Spirit because Jesus was trying to accomplish something at this point, okay? And it's over and over again. Same with the disciples. Now, they were whooshed clean, you know, as far as uh, 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 the speaking in tongues or speaking in languages, but it wasn't necessarily... You know, that was the only gift that was bestowed upon them at that point. Let's look at Paul with in, Ephes in Ephesus here. It says, while Apollos was uh, at Corinth, Paul took the road through the inner and, and interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And this is where we sit with a lot of believers, okay? It doesn't mean you don't believe in Jesus Christ. You just might not really know and understand what the Holy Spirit is. And they answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Now listen to the separation of the two here. Okay, the cleansing and the washing of your sins, the blood of Christ cleansing you at this point. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So here you got 12 men who got filled with the Holy Spirit, who can now speak in tongues, who were gifted with the Holy Spirit, but they didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was. Okay? They didn't understand it. I want you to take scripture this morning, and hopefully you, you wrote some of this down, but and if, you, if, you, if you need to look back at this, let me know. The whole bottom line of the Holy Spirit is empowering. Okay? That, that's why I want you to get out of this this morning, if nothing else. The Holy Spirit empowers you to do the work of God, to understand the Word of God, to understand the gifts of God. This is what God left for us. I'm going to leave a counselor with you. I'm going to leave this back with you. I'm going to go be with my Father, but with you I'm going to leave the Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's three in one. Is it real? Yes. Does it empower you? Yes. If you do not call upon it, if you squash it, it's no good to you. You have to embrace the Holy Spirit. You have to be willing to, to, to be really good about yourself and about your ministry, about your, your, the, the, your relationship with Christ. So you have to call in the Holy Spirit again. And I believe our church has called in the Holy Spirit to engage in this building. I'm not talking about being crazy town here. I'm not talking about running around the sanctuary with tambourines and, and flags and everything like that. I'm talking about allow the Holy Spirit to come down deep inside of you and to take hold of you. The Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues. I want you to think about your baptism of the Holy Spirit here this morning. Are you engaging the Holy Spirit? Okay? If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit already. Okay? You've been cleansed by the water baptism. You got clean vessels, clean them out, receive the Holy Spirit again. Give it a clean vessel. Now, two of the things he talked about is right. Okay? But the third one kind of went south there a little bit. Think about your spiritual gifts. Think about your empowering. Do you have a clean vessel to house the Holy Spirit? If not, remove it this morning. Get rid of it and allow the Holy Spirit to have a clean vessel. Now, are, 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 are you, are you going to contaminate it? Yeah. Because we're, we're broken vessels, aren't we? And things tend to leak in. Things tend to fall in. But if we continuously cleanse that vessel out, clean it out, and replace it, God will do some awesome things. My spiritual gift is vision. I've shared that with a lot of you. And, and that's not an arrogant thing. That's what God has given me. He does get me up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. He gives me very clear vision sometimes. He gives me, gives me you know, just thoughts in my heart sometimes. 
My wife, Christine, is given the very, very seriously spiritual gift of discernment. She can talk with a person for five minutes and know if that person is true or not true, genuine or not genuine. She can be in a situation. Because every time we've come to a church, it hasn't been me necessarily saying, this is where we should be. This has been her saying, uh-uh. Or, yep, this is where it needs to be. Spiritual gifts are very real, but you've got to engage them, and you've got to embrace them, and you have to allow it to dwell within you. That's scary to think that something's actually inside of you, isn't it? I mean, it almost seems invasive. That's what gives you your gifts, though. That's what empowers you to prophesy about the Lord, to proclaim his name loudly, to go up to that person that you would never go up to otherwise and proclaim his name and to invite him to church and to explain to him who this Jesus Christ is. I want people walk in our doors and they hear us prophesying the word of God. I want, I want us to be able to, to be the ones who, who, who say, man, that, that, that church is on fire for the Lord. And on fire, I mean the Holy Spirit's working strongly. I don't know about the rest of you, but there's times I've walked into this sanctuary and you can feel the Holy Spirit dripping off the wall. And there's time I've walked in here and it feels dead. And there's things going on in everyone's life. I know that. But the problem is, you know, we have a hard time wrapping our heads around this stuff. I mean, the mysterious thing of a Holy Spirit. You can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't taste it. We believe in God. And we go to a point of even believing in Jesus Christ that he died for us and he rose again. But for some reason, we have a hard time really, really grasping on that the Holy Spirit is with us at all times trying to empower us, trying to give us the gifts that we, that God wants us to do out in this world. I've been reading Exodus lately. And if you remember the scripture where God picks up Moses and, and he lays him in, in, in the cleft of the mountain. Remember that? And he covers Moses' face with his hand. And he says, you can't even handle seeing my face. He says, so he saw the hind parts of God. That's basically what it says. I had a huge revelation this week. God is so huge. First of all, God's a spirit, right? So he doesn't have a physical hand. But what do we think about? We think Hollywood, don't we? We think, you th we think a big hand. We see it on pictures and all that stuff because you have to put some kind of rationale to it. So we think about God's hand going over Moses' face. Well, his hand, I mean, it goes from never, ever to ever. I mean... In his hind parts. We're not talking about his butt. Okay? But that's a vision we get, right? Because it says he sees his hind parts. The revelation I had this week, I believe that's where God gave him the revelation and, and, and the prophecy of writing the first five books of the Bible. See, his hind parts represented the past. Isn't that good stuff? I want you to think about that. But it's hard to wrap your head around that, right? I mean, it's hard to wrap your head around even the hand and the hind parts of God, let alone the Holy Spirit that's engulfed in you. Trust. Trust and obey. I mean, that is the simplest way we can do. That's the simplest thing that we can do, is trust. Because you know what? God's here to save today, and he will. He sent his Lord and Savior with us. Jesus Christ said, with you, I leave my spirit. And it's going to empower you, and it's going to give you the things that you need. I want everything that God has for us. I want you to experience God in the, in the newest way that you can. Embrace the Holy Spirit today. I'm just going to pray over all of you. And I'm going to ask for each person to just put a hand on the person next to your shoulders. Okay? Because Paul went to Apollos, didn't he? And he laid his hand on him. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit. I just want to be empowered again with the Holy Spirit. And that comes from your brothers and sisters. That comes from the people around you. So we're just going to pray for ignition of the Holy Spirit this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father.